And we can glorify the mind of a child, but when a child doesn't get what he or she wants, it can be brutal. Because they want what they want. And we're also like that. We as adults, we cover it up a little bit more. We try to make it so that the friends, people around us don't know it. But we're just like that. And we don't get what we want. We're miserable. We feel oppressed. We start wars. We create slaves. We do all these things that are so horrendous. We destroy the planet. We, we, we pollute the nest that we actually live in. This is what human beings do with this one-sided mind. If we want to find freedom, we have to know what we're doing. We, first, we have to know what the problem is. Mostly, we don't, we're unaware of the problem. So, things just keep getting worse and worse and worse because we're not aware of what we're doing. So, it's said that the first rule when you find yourself in a hole is to stop digging. But you have to know you're in the hole. And then, it's a nice idea to stop digging. But again, we human beings have this difficulty. Even though we know we keep digging and we're making it worse, we can't stop. Something inside of us is even more powerful than our wisdom. And maybe that's our desire, or our, our greed, or our neediness, or our unconsciousness. You can use many different words for it. But we have to deal with that. If we want to change our life, if we want freedom, if we want wisdom, if we want compassion, if we want to help this world, we have to change things. We almost, we have to grab hold of our passions and probably make peace with them, but we do have to stop digging. And watching is the key point. And we spent 10, 10 minutes or so meditating this morning. That's all we're doing is watching. We're watching and we're bringing our attention to our lower abdomen. And in that bringing attention to the lower abdomen, we're building some strength, some power. Zen Master Sung San used to take his stick and he'd poke us right here about two inches below our navel. He said, make your center stronger, stronger, stronger. And a strong center isn't brittle. It's fluid. It can move. One of the examples that's sometimes given in Japan, there are these dolls they call Bodhidharma dolls. There's Bodhidharma right up there. Most probably the most famous image in, Bo in Zen Buddhism. Bodhidharma is credited with bringing Zen from India to China. And in Japan, they have these Bodhidharma dolls. And they have their about this big, and their wood, and they have a weighted bottom. And when you push the doll over, it comes right back to the top. When I was a kid, I had a, a punching bag like this. It was Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> and you blow it up, and you punch it, and it falls down, and pops right back up. That's a strong center. That's a strong center. Not this rigid thing that can never move. But a center, a strong center, can move with the circumstances, can come back, can recover. It's a little bit like Jason going outside at 3 in the morning and sitting and recognizing the one-sidedness of his thinking. That's a strong center. That's the ability to be aware of our actions and our thoughts and our beliefs and our feelings and bear witness to them and understand them, and hopefully do something different. Because our actions are what make our life. And not only my life, it would be enough it was just my life, but it's everybody else's life around us. So what we do, how we are, how we be in this world, makes an incredible difference. And practice is the tool we have to deal with this situation.